Frank, the, you described the Internet of Things and play, maybe places like Ireland's place in it as the perfect storm. Uh, can you sum up what's happening? What, how is it that we've gone from the desktop revolution to the smartphone revolution to now 50 billion conceivable devices connected within five years? Um, it's really three areas that, that have really helped drive it, and it all becomes kind of cost and availability and ubiquity. So the cost of sensors has greatly reduced. The cost of the internet and the bandwidth uh, to move all that uh, data around um, has reduced, uh, you know, by magnitudes. And then obviously the processing cost uh, from Intel using Moore's law has driven the cost of sensors or cost of computing down by uh, over 60x, um, you know, over the over the last uh, you know five years or so. So the real issue is that all of those things together make it cost effective, makes it ubiquitous which then allows you to start getting the scale and the connectivity. So, so kind of all of that's come together to create what I think can be this next uh, you know, revolution in this space. Now, Intel's role in it, I mean, you guys have been in embedded devices for decades now, and you're looking at a situation where, uh, on one hand, everyone's talking about the internet of everything, but we need a bit of order out of the chaos, because it could be chaotic otherwise. You know, everything's device, all these devices connected to, to the internet. Uh, in terms of the kind of the main issues that you guys are concerned with, uh, for one thing, uh, you're creating gateways. I hear people talk a lot about power and energy. Uh, in terms of the kind of problems you guys see yourselves solving and the kind of problems that the uh, Ignition Center will solve. So I, I think it's very wide open. First of all, you mentioned kind of the, the, the chaos out there. Um, it is going to be important to have standards. Um, across this ecosystem, and, and Intel and many other companies are partnering together to drive those standards. You've ultimately got to figure out how uh, some standard that lets devices connect uh, seamlessly and be able to manage those. You need some kind of data standard so you can start bringing this stuff together. Um, I think the role that uh, IoT Ignition um, Lab here in Ireland can bring is really bringing in all those different players that make those things happen for a solution and give them a real, a real working environment. To me, the exciting part here is there's technology here, there's collaborative spaces where you can just get in there and kind of troubleshoot and roll your sleeves up and get to work and figure out, you know, brainstorm how to go do it. And then you've got incredible intellectual power here and you bring all that together in an environment that's, that just get your mind set around creating new things and new ways of doing business. I think that's the power of this. There's kind of it, to me I see it as kind of a, there's no, there's no boundaries in here, there's no barriers in here. You've got technology people, you've got people trying to solve a business problem, you've got creative parts of the solution all working together to ultimately solve that business problem. And you know, you get in your normal work environment sometimes, it gets, you get kind of you know, doing what you do every day and it, sometimes it's, 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 it's not so easy to be creative and kind of have your mind be um, kind of across all boundaries. And I think that's the beauty of an environment like this that is just set up to do that. Come here, be creative, come here, solve problem. That's the value of this. And in terms of like uh, the kind of uh, things Intel are doing, like you guys have created the Quark processor, and today I heard a lot about the gateways. Right. How, how evolved are the gateways and towards um, you know being deployed commercially, or are they still is it still very really much a, an R and D thing? Uh, no, we actually have them in real deployments. You heard some of the examples today. There's examples actually in the lab where there's real commercial uh, deployments. So it's uh, it's just starting at scale. Uh, we launched them last year. Uh, we're actually getting to roll out a new release of those Moon Island 3.0 um, in the next in the next month or so, which continues to improve usability and, and some of the capabilities. So I think we're just at the beginning of the scale. We have real examples where they have been commercially deployed, and I think the challenge for us and the opportunity for us and our partners and customers is now take some of these use cases that have been shown that they work and take these gateways and then start rapidly scaling them. So we're, we're in the early days of the scale process, absolutely. Now, the history of Intel, we've always seen Intel as a chip company, you know, it made processors. Uh, but it was impressing us today that it's, it's as much a software company too, and it does a lot of other things that's made the computing ecosystem or continuum happen, no, it has. Um, what will Intel look like in five years when, when this revolution takes hold? <laughs> that's a, that, good question. I'm not going to predict exactly that, but I think what you will see is that you know, we're still going to be driving Moore's Law five years from now. That's core of what we do and everything we do. So that part of Intel, just know that's going to keep going. We're going to keep investing and keep Moore's Law going. What that's going to enable, and you heard some of the examples today, is Moore's Law, and as we continue to move that, the ability that we're going to have to keep making things more power efficient, more compute power, 
smaller and smaller and smaller footprint is going to allow us to create solutions and opportunities that we probably don't even know today. As things continue to shrink and shrink, <coughs> silicon processing will, you know, it'll be in your clothes, it can be everywhere, it'll be almost invisible to you. So our core Intel, keep it more is all alive, will look the same and keep pushing that forward. And then I think where the exciting part is, is Intel figuring out IOTG is a, is a our IOT group is a big piece of that. How do we take those new capabilities and continue to take them into new areas? So I, I think that is where the excitement will be. What will IOT, the business in the world, look like? What are the solutions that'll be coming to market? I think that's what's less predictable because it's getting created every day.